hello and welcome to the show. Now, I will be honest, I am not a massive fan of this modern SUV trend. I think on the most part, they're really rather unnecessary. You know, 99% of the time, they're not used for what they were initially designed for. You know, like sort of a state car or wagon or shooting brake, whatever you want to call it, would be uh, much more suitable. Regardless of that, though, there is obviously an ever-growing market as more and more of them are being released, and we're now getting sports versions of these. There are quite a few of them in Forza, so we decided to take these out for a test and see which of these super SUVs would be victorious. Starting off with a race, we will go to the Silverstone International Circuit, a rather wet day here at uh, Silverstone with a selection of these vehicles. I put it in the wet in the hope that somebody would roll. Unfortunately, we, we didn't have any rollers with these, and it was, as you can expect, rather busy. There was a little bit of Porsche on Porsche friendly fire. My bad on that one. I slightly nudged the uh, the McCann that uh, got very, very sideways. BMW uh, managing to keep out of trouble. The Jeep ending up across the puddle. Horrible puddle out wide through that uh, section, but we all made it through the opening lap okay as we head on to the back straight there was a wild card in the form of an audi rs2 there was also uh, the rally fighter while the rest of these suvs are the sort of vehicles you would expect i threw the rally fighter in it is rather different to all of these vehicles i was curious to see how the purpose-built race vehicle would fare against the much more powerful but considerably heavier suvs that it was going up against on this uh, opening race, the BMW X6 was doing a very good job of carving his way through the field, getting up into second place. A lot of cars had trouble getting stopped at the end of the long straight. Perhaps not too surprising, these things are mighty, mighty fast in a straight line, but they are very, very heavy. The BMW here, 5,000 pounds. It's a lot, of, a lot of momentum you've got to try and shrug off in the braking zones and quite a bit of understeer from, well, just about everything around the final turn. As I said, I didn't get off to a particularly good start with the Cayenne. However, it was a bloody fast car. The, uh, the Porsche wasn't the most powerful vehicle here. No, that would go to the Mercedes G-Wagon. But still, there is a lot of power in the <laughs> Porsche. We get to the inside of the Range Rover supercharged, heading down towards this back straight. The Range Rover could run and sort of hold it around the outside initially, but it was no match for the mighty Porsche when it came to the straight line speed and there was a nice train of cars up ahead of me to try and fight through. As I said, the G-Wagon, most powerful vehicle here, over 600 horsepower, over 700 torque. That is tremendous figures from this car. Unfortunately, it is a handful. It does not drive very nicely. I mean, the Porsche is a bit of a boat, yes, but the, 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 the Mercedes is not a very nice car to drive through these corners. He does get the vehicle up the inside of the Range Rover to get the place there. Struggling with grip, though. The Jeep is around the outside. Good move from the Jeep, actually, around the outside of the Range Rover on that final corner. And the Cherokee is trying to get to the inside of the G-Wagon. Can't quite do it in turn one, but it would only be a matter of time. The Mercedes was, yeah, not particularly good through the corners. The Rally Fighter was actually holding on very, very well in this opening race. It is the lowest PI by quite some way here. It's a class down on the likes of the Cayenne and uh, the Range Rover that's going, that's fighting with it here. But um, yeah, it's not got anywhere near the power of the cars around it, but it is considerably lighter. You know, after all, it's designed as a racing vehicle. It's having a good tussle with the, the Range Rover. Range Rover got to the inside, couldn't get it stopped. A good cutback from the Rally Fighter. You know, the Range Rover was quicker than it in a straight line, but it didn't really pull, you know, massively away from it. The Rally Fighter can keep to the inside, can break later than the Range Rover would get the position back still though that uh, SVR was having a look for a way past the head up towards the final corners. The Rally Fighter is going to go defensive and the Range Rover doesn't have the grip to try it around the outside. You've also got to bear in mind the Rally Fighter here was the only rear wheel drive vehicle as we head around the final turn. <laughs> Just clips the puddle, gets the Rally Fighter very sideways but is still managing to fend off that Range Rover. That little tussle, though, was allowing me to catch up with the Cayenne as we come towards turn one. The Range Rover would simply outdrag the Rally Fighter once more, though. The Rally Fighter doing the cutback gets to the inside, uh, then on the outside for the next corner is just 
wiggling across the road just about keeps it all on place. He was trying to get the vehicle to the inside for this particular turn. That's where he wanted to be. That big slide, though, cost him, and he couldn't quite hold it there. I'm around the outside, ready to pounce with the Porsche, making the most of the mighty acceleration in the Akai. And the X5 is joining in the fight as well. The rally fighter can carry so much more speed through these corners than we could, especially in these wet conditions being so much lighter. Was helpful, but that little bit of lack of straight line speed would be costly. Three cars come past in as many corners as the rally fighter would start to uh, gradually slip down through the order. At the front, our wild card was leading the way, the Audi RS2. Now, the, the rules for this, much as we had with the wild card in the muscle car showdown, if the SUVs failed to beat the Audi, they would lose 10 points for that particular event. And at the moment, the Audi was leading the way. It was doing a mighty fine job at the front of the field. However, he was coming under threat from the X6. And much like we saw the Rally Fighter struggling with the straight line speed, the BMW far, far quicker, but had nowhere near the grip of the Audi. The RS2 right around the outside. That is not an easy corner, especially in the wet. That is not an easy corner to go around the outside, especially of a much larger vehicle. The Audi almost held it, but again is lacking that acceleration down towards these final corners. It's so much quicker, though. It gets caught out just by how slow the BMW has to go through these turns. The Audi trying to get to the inside as they run up towards the line can carry the speed through the corners, but it's always going to struggle with the acceleration of the BMW. The Audi, yes, it's got far, far much less horsepower than the vehicles around. It is considerably lighter, but uh, that is the, the order for this race. The X6 would uh, just manage to pull away a little bit in the closing lap or so. Further back, once we kind of shuffled ourselves out over the opening sort of two or three laps, it actually remained relatively solid. The X6 taking victory, the Audi would come in second ahead of the Macan, Mike Cayenne would come in fourth ahead of the Range Rover SVR. The Rally Fighter actually clinged on pretty well throughout this race. Yes, it lacked the straight line speed of the much more powerful SUVs, but uh, you can see up ahead the SVR just holding off the the X5 towards the line. It didn't drop too far back from the cars ahead. The Cherokee was right on the bumper, but uh, ran out of laps. Probably could have eventually found a way past the Rally Fighter. But uh, yeah, ran out of laps and they would beat out the Mercedes G-Wagon and the poor <laughs> Range Rover Supercharge. That was struggling. That was really struggling to keep up with this field. Race number two, we would head to the Yas Marina South layout. The Porsche Cayenne gets a fantastic start between this and probably you know, the, the Range Rover and the X5. We got some of the uh, not the X5, sorry, the X6. Got some of the best launches here. I managed to get myself up into third place as we came around this over the court. That's right from the back of the grid. As always with these, we have a reverse PI grid, so the fastest cars had the most ground to make up. The Porsche Porsches, we both made a fantastic start. No friendly fire between us this time around. McCann taking the lead. I would follow through. I, I was very, very pleased to have managed to make up so much ground. The Cayenne does get off the line very, very well. And I was hoping I could break free from the rest of the field. Get a little bit of a nudge from the Audi. I mean, the Audi RS2 is not exactly the smallest of vehicles. But in this field, against these kind of cars, it looks absolutely tiny. As he's trying to fight back, of course, the RS2 is so much better through these turns. But there's no answer for the power of the Cayenne or the X6 and the other SUVs that were around. The X6 was once more trying to make his way up through the field. I would get the Cayenne into the lead relatively easy while the RS2 was struggling a little bit more here at uh, Yas Marina. He was having a bit more trouble trying to fend off these SUVs battling with the, the X5. The X6 is trying to get in as well. The Audi just doesn't have the acceleration to keep up with these cars. The Range Rover is now joining in the fun. We were, though, seeing a really rather big split between this top group of cars and the latter group of cars. The Cherokee, the Rally Fighter, the Supercharged Range Rover, and the G-Wagon. They really couldn't keep up with this top group. The X6 passing the RS2 and then immediately on the bumper of the X5. Range Rover still fighting away with the Audi. The McCann was outclassed in a straight line. I mean, bear in mind it's got 100 less horsepower, I think over 100 less torque than the Cayenne. It is lighter and it's a really good car through the corners. It is outclassed by the straight line speed. Of the likes of my Cayenne, the X6 would come past. Got very, very close to <laughs> clipping the rear of the Porsche and getting that manoeuvre done. The X5 would find a way past the McCann as well. But you can already see only a couple of laps and, and the, the sort of 
split in the field between this top group and the latter group. As I said, the Audi would struggle and gradually drop off the back of this train. There was an interesting battle over third place, while the Cayenne and X6 would drive away a little bit at the front. The X5 was trying to fend off the Range Rover, the Nintel was trying to fend off the McCann. Range Rover, quickest I think of the lot in a straight line, the McCann by far the best through the corners, and the X5 a bit of an overall car, led to a rather interesting little group of vehicles fighting over the last of the podium spots. I was coming under increasing pressure from the X6, the Cayenne, not a bad vehicle, certainly, but uh, I made a sort of a little error, and then once the X6 was there, I was having to try and defend, and as soon as you start defending, you're slowing yourself down, I was, yeah, under an awful lot of pressure. Unfortunately for me, I would just run it in a little bit too deep, I couldn't get the Porsche slowed down in time. I do recover it back onto the track, but I'm so compromised with my line through this next couple of quarters. The BMW is right there, <laughs> goes around the outside of me. Not quite the ideal position, but if you can keep it there, you'll be on the inside for the next fast corner. He does, there's just about enough room for an X6. I'm still trying my very best to defend. The BMW though goes for the cutback out of the final turn, and now we have a drag race down towards the start finish line. These two are incredibly evenly matched. I think from a standstill, the Cayenne gets a little bit of a better launch than the X6, but once we're going out here, it is so, so similar between the two cars. The BMW, though, is on the inside into Turn 1. I go for trying to get a cutback through these corners, but uh, couldn't quite get my vehicle where I wanted it. A big slide from the Porsche as well. Lots of smoke coming off of my car, but uh, yeah, couldn't quite do anything to get the, uh, the car back past. While we did have our battle going on at the front, the secondary group were having <laughs> quite an interesting argument here between the G-Wagon, the Rally Fighter, and the Range Rover Supercharger. Unfortunately, the Jeep would clip a wall somewhere, damage the car, and fall back through the order. The Rally Fighter, far better through the corners, although the difficulty with the Rally Fighter is it loves to stick its front wheels wiggling around in the air through heavy cornering. It does tripod very well, and that wasn't helping it put the power down out of the corners. And as you can imagine, the G-Wagon and the Range Rover considerably faster in a straight line. But it kind of all worked itself out so that they were relatively close for most of the race. The Range Rover gets up the inside into turn one, can't get it stopped, and the Rally Fighter will get the position back relatively easy. Third place fight, and that was still very much ongoing between the three rather black uh, SUVs in this group. The X5 still trying his best to fend off that uh, SVR as they all managed to concertina up and bump into one another. The McCann was so much faster through the corners than the cars ahead, but as soon as it got to a straight, it was just always losing out to these vehicles. The SVR spotted a gap and went for it up the inside, kind of marshals the X5 a little bit wide, and now we're going to go three wide down towards the final corner. In the end, the McCann doesn't have the acceleration to quite keep up there. McCann does, though, get to the inside of the X5 as the SVR gets some understeer. I mean, all of these things were relatively understeery, quite boat-like around these turns. They are, you know, incredibly heavy. We're talking high 4,000s, most of them in the 5,000 pounds region. Uh, so, yeah, quite a lot of understeer coming from these cars. The McCann, the lightest of this this lot, aside from the Rally Fighter, just over 4,000, um, would lose out to the X5 with its straight-line speed down towards that first corner. I had uh, maintained the pressure on the X5. Once he got past me, he was having to defend and then makes exactly the same mistake that I did into this corner. I think he had a wheel on the outside curb and just couldn't get the BMW turned and slow down in time, ran its hand wide. Now it was my turn in the Cayenne to look for a way past. I was stuck on the outside though. There was really nowhere to go. However, being out there, I had forced the BMW to take a very, very tight line. He was slow off of the corner and I spotted my opportunity. Have a big fire up the inside into the final turn. I get the Porsche alongside. The BMW tries to cut back to the inside and once more, it is a drag race towards the line but the X6 is too far back. It was incredibly close. A fantastic, fantastic few final laps between us and the Cayenne would take victory. Just one little mistake from the X6 would uh, be costly in that one. The racing had actually been a surprisingly large amount of fun, but after that, I had to go and take the vehicles for a hot lap around the Top Gear test track. And Victor 
would go to the Porsche 123.6 around this circuit. It was indeed all very close between these cars. The Cayenne would be the fastest, I think, helped by its acceleration. Certainly, some of the slower corners, the acceleration of the Cayenne is uh, very, very impressive. The McCann would come second, 124.0. The handling of the McCann is incredible. I've got to say, is by far the best driving car of this lot at a well-deserved second place you know it makes up its time in the slower corners it lacks the acceleration the straight line speed but it does make its time up in the slower corners not very far behind that though the x6m comes in third ahead of the range rover svr the audi rs2 does get a mid-pack finish you know, you've got to bear in mind the audi rs2 much lower pi than some of the vehicles around it the cayenne uh, the range rover the x6 they're all very high c-class cars the audi rs2 is only a mid c-class car and you know considerably older estate car that one it was really holding its own with this group it does beat the x5 and the jeep cherokee uh, further back the mercedes g-wagon does beat the rally fighter around here, although the Rally Fighter is a much nicer car to drive when it's not wheeling a wheel around in the air, and the Range Rover Supercharged will be down at the back with its uh, 126.8. The, the Supercharged car did struggle in this field. So, with the race is done, it was on to a drag race. See the Rally Fighter getting a little bit left for dead, being the only rear wheel drive car, not helping with the launch immediately. Uh, once we've got going, the Cayenne and X6 are streaking off. The X5 is trying to hold on to third place as the Range Rover SVR is coming quickly after all of the struggle to the supercharged Range Rover. That was faring much better in this drag race as the G-Wagon also comes a little bit better, a little bit more suited to this kind of thing. The Cayenne was a... Oh, it seemed to do very well in the races. The McCann, we might have had a little bit of chat lag with the uh, the countdown for the uh, go here. McCann got a little bit of a a little bit of an earlier start than the the rest of us, or much better reaction than us. Uh, either way, it doesn't really make any difference to the McCann. It just doesn't have the power to compete with the rest of these cars. The Cayenne and X6, as I said, absolutely neck and neck between those two vehicles. Cayenne gets off the line a little better. Does kind of even itself out. The um, a BMW is a little bit more powerful, so further on in the run, the BMW comes better. Cayenne is a little lighter as well. The Rally Fighter, as I said, the only rear-wheel drive car in this showdown, gets off the line relatively poorly. And you've got to consider, you know, this thing is, is well down on power to the vehicles around it. The Cherokee struggles here as well. Again, the Cherokee is a few, a few sort of 50, 60 horsepower down on a lot of the other cars. It's a couple hundred down on the likes of the G-Wagon. Uh, the Rally Fighter was coming good towards the end. The lightness of the Rally Fighter helping it out here. Almost, almost getting the uh, Cherokee before they cross the line. Both of them losing out to the Audi RS2. The G-Wagon had been pretty awful, really, when it came to the corners. But with its immense power and torque figures, you know, we're talking 600 horsepower, 700 torque in this, uh, it would suit the drag racing a little bit better. But it is still quite heavy and a little sluggish off the line. It does get ahead of the McCann. Interestingly, it gets beaten by the supercharged Range Rover. So on to the full results. You can see just how close it was between the X6 and the Cayenne. Yeah, there is not much to pick between those two vehicles. The X5 coming home in third, just beating the Range Rover SVR. The supercharged Range Rover does well to get so or to stay so close to the SVR. The G-Wagon beating out the McCann. There's a little bit of a gap back to the Audi RS2 that does beat the Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> and uh, the Rally Fighter is last, but only by a few millimetres. Yeah, there are, after such a poor start, the Rally Fighter did sort of come good towards the end of that uh, run. So a relatively close drag race in all of this. For our final test, it would be 0 to 100 to 0. Unfortunately, you know, there's no off-roading tracks that we can do. We can't off-road test these vehicles in Forza 6. So, yeah, especially considering a lot of these are designed to be sport SUVs. Well, we're going to be testing them with, uh, with the road stuff. So, yeah, good test of acceleration, but also the braking. And this is where we were expecting to see the SUV struggle a little bit. The Audi RS2 would go first to set the benchmark. However... Uh, despite the huge amounts of weight, the kind of the power and the four-wheel drive systems in these uh, SUVs would uh, set them uh, set them up really rather nicely. The Cherokee beats the Audi by a fair margin. The Mercedes G-Wagon actually does really well in this. I was not expecting to see the G-Wagon do so well, but uh, yeah, the G-Wagon 
did uh, fare far better than we were expecting. The McCann down on power, but light car, so once it does get to 100, it can get stopped very quickly. The Cayenne, very, very impressive in this test. It's, it's very quick launch, helps it no end, and while it's not as light as the McCann, it is still a bit lighter than some of the other vehicles. The Range Rover SVR also uh, going very, very impressively, incredibly close between the Range Rover and the Cayenne. Up next, the uh, Range Rover Supercharged. A relatively quick acceleration. You know, it wasn't that far off the SVR in terms of the, the drag race, but not quite as good under braking. The BMW X6 actually struggled in this test. We weren't expecting the X6 to struggle quite as much as it did. I guess perhaps it's a little bit heavier than the likes of the Range Rover and the uh, and the, the Porsche Cayenne. The X5 fared relatively well uh, out here, managing to beat the X6. And then finally, we had the Rally Fighter, and that too, despite the uh, rear-wheel drive launch, would manage to beat the RS2 quite convincingly as well. Yeah, I thought the RS2 might fare a bit better in this test. Anyway, on to the results, and it would be a round victory for the Range Rover taking its first victory in this showdown, just beating out the Cayenne very close between those uh, those two vehicles. Yeah, Range Rover pretty damn good under breaking the X5, coming home in third place, a little bit further down the road. Actually, a relatively close sort of cluster of these SUVs, probably one of the closest we've seen with these 0 to 100 to 0s. Um, so yeah, so it was always always interesting to have these uh, very close. G wagon does very well actually, and this weren't expecting that to do as well as it did, uh, beating the X6. That yeah, it just didn't fare so well at uh, this particular test. Next cluster of vehicles, the Range Rover Supercharged, just managing to beat out the Cherokee, which in turn manages to beat the Rally Fighter and the Pecan, uh, losing out a little bit there, just his lack of acceleration, uh, a few hundred or a hundred and two hundred horsepower down on some of the cars around it, causing a little bit of problems the RS2 a uh, fair way down the order so yeah certainly a uh, an interesting test for these I really thought they'd be a lot closer to the Audi than they actually were on to the overall results and it was another very very close showdown at the top though victory would go to the Porsche Cayenne by just four points over the BMW X6M mistake of the final lap of that Yas Marina race would have uh, cost the X6 the victory. And that is how close this uh, this showdown was between those two cars. The Range Rover gets a well-deserved third place ahead of the BMW X6. Porsche McCann coming home in fifth ahead of the G-Wagon. Range Rover Supercharged scores better points with its uh, decent performance in the drag race and the 0-100 to, to naught. And the Cherokee, uh, same points as the Rally Fighter, but would beat it based on its uh, highest score. So... Our victor is the Cayenne, the car that I drove. I think it's the first time I've actually won one of these showdowns. Um, it was a little bit of a boat in the wet. It didn't quite like the Silverstone track as much as or the Silverstone track in, in the wet conditions quite as much. However, I mean, getting up to sort of second place off the line at Yas Marina, it is a very, very quick vehicle. This thing is a hell of a quick vehicle in a straight line and especially sort of launching off of the line and while it was a little bit uncooperative at times getting it around the corners it could carry enough speed to be competitive with the likes of the bmw between the cayenne and, and the x6 they were very very close vehicles throughout most of these tests you saw the drag race you saw the race at yas marina had i not got a little bit caught up at the start perhaps it's still so they would have been close i think the x6 might have fared a, uh, a tad better there i perhaps slightly prefer the look of the cayenne to the x6 the x6 always looks a little bit weird neither of them though are, are massively uh, pretty cars or suvs whatever you want to call them uh yeah very very similar vehicles kind of going to come down to a, a bit of personal preference between the pair of them the range rover the svr does get a well-deserved third it pretty much was the best of the rest it was just that little bit down on the porsche and the bmw when it came to the circuit races it just couldn't quite keep up with them we dropped despite us fighting and pushing each other incredibly hard at yas marina you know the range rover once it did get three free sorry of the uh, the third place battle it couldn't keep up with the pace that uh, the porsche and the bmw were setting but still a very very solid car an incredibly impressive naught to 100 to naught as well time from the range rover out of all of them though the one that i would have would be the Porsche Macan. This was the one that impressed me the most, especially when I did the laps of Top Gear. This is a hell of a nice car to drive. Really wasn't expecting it to drive as well as it does. You know, it's, it's 100 horsepower down, 100 and a bit torque down on the Cayenne. If it had the same engine 
as the Cayenne, this thing would win, and it would win comfortably. That is how well it drives. It's so much lighter than the rest of the the vehicles in here. It makes it's much better under brakes. It's much better through the corners. I really like it, and I think it's probably the best looking between this and the Range Rover SVR. I think they're the two best looking ones, and I w I would have the Macan uh, definitely. I really really like the car. Just a shame it doesn't have more power. And uh, there was yeah, well, there was a very a very much uh, an obvious split in this field with uh, the G wagon, despite all its power and torque, you know, an incredible engine in the car. It, it just doesn't have the handling. The same could be said for the Range Rover Supercharged. That thing did struggle as well around the turns. The Jeep could sometimes have the handling. It was a similar boat with the Jeep as, as the McCann was. The, the Jeep was relatively good around the corners, but really lacked acceleration. It was very obvious in the drag race. The uh, the Cherokee just did not quite have the power to compete with the other vehicles. The G-Wagon and the normal Range Rover Supercharged really didn't have the handling. Rally Fighter held on pretty well for a, sort of a purpose-built race car thing uh, as well. However, that is it for this uh, video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.